One second. So main important uh, left over is OSA model. Okay. OSA model. Uh, what happened? OSA model. IP addresses, both IPv4, uh, IPv6 kind of stuff, private IP addresses, NatPad kind of stuff. Okay, so these are the main things are left over in the networking and uh, troubleshooting, basic troubleshooting. Okay, if possible, I will cover this one with the ping. Okay, with the ping. Um, and understanding uh, with the OSA layers also. These are the topics are left over. So now we will start with the OSI. The record is started. What is OSA model? Open system interconnect. Open system interconnect. Where are we going? Actually, uh, why I create this one is for this open system interconnect. It is a uh, anyone can use OSI model. It is a reference model, guys, for only to understand how network is functioning, or you want to create a new network, or you want to troubleshoot a network. OSI model is useful. Actually, we are using TCP. IP model. Actually, we are using TCP IP model. Okay. TCP IP model only we are using. TCP IP model. A protocol we are using TCP IP protocol suit so worldwide we are using TCP IP and for all public communication and private communication so, okay we are not using OSI and lot of people think lot of people think from OSA model from OSI uh, TCP came. No, no, no. It is only comparison, guys. OSI to TCP comparison only there. But originally, TCP is also called as DOD earlier. Okay. So, this Apple Talk, IPX, SPX, all these models, including TCP IP model before OSI. So, OSI is giving a standards. Okay. OSI is a like a standard model. If you want to create any network, you can use a OSA model or you want to understand any model, any model like a TCP IP model you want to understand or you want to understand a network, you want to troubleshoot a network, OSA each and every layer will be useful because in TCP certain layers are clubbed into one layer only. Okay, that's why it is. So we should learn a OSA model. So in the networking, any basic networking guys may may not be your network engineer. Maybe you are a network engineer or not, but you, you are working in a, any IT related means anything touches the network related. So OSA is important. Okay, anything like I said, no, I want to become a cloud uh, expert uh, in a cloud. Also, there is a networking concept. So concepts of networking understanding. OSA is first important. Open system interconnect. It is a reference model. There is a seven layers are there. Each and every layer we have to study. Very basic uh, points only I will tell. So um, very depth packet kind of stuff. This voice layers of uh, the voice model is standardized by ISO International Organization for a standardization. And uh, for networking communication. So there is a standard a given general given from the IEEE. You may know what is IEEE instead of electrical and electronics engineering. Okay, so what is IEEE? 
it is an uh, in-store means it is also an organization um, will give uh, publish journals um, based on the certain topics certain standards some rfcs included in this the standard model is 802 for all ethernet communications 802 okay so 802.3 means it is ethernet communication 802.11 means your wi-fi related communication wireless communication 802.11 a b c kind of stuff also there you can see 802.11 okay different type of uh, a b c d are there each one will represent certain bandwidth or frequency part okay so See 802.11 AC, AC represents 5 gigahertz bandwidth. N or AX can be used either 2.4 or 5 gigahertz bandwidth. Okay. So this is A and this is the device may be operated without licenses as allowed of part 15 FCC rule and regulations. Okay. So each letter represent a frequency a band or a um, the connectivity kind of stuff. So you can go to uh, like a WLAN. So okay, wireless LAN. Uh, the chart is there. So there you can go to chart and we can find each letter. Okay, what is their frequency and bandwidth support? Okay. Next, voice layer means seven layer model. Okay, it is a seven layer model there is a totally seven <laughs> names are there for some people for starters okay for a starters so it may be a uh, challenging for starters it is may challenging so someone send a message rahan king okay What is the challenging part here? How to remember the names? Names, ranges for some people, for that to start us, today only people learning. So that for them it is detail difficult. But to do, read uh, two times, three times, write uh, five times, whatever you do it guys, all names should be remember. That's it, so no other choice, okay? So compulsory seven names are important in order is important An order means either top to bottom or bottom to top. Some people learn in a college or maybe from institute or a books. So they may learn from physical layer to application layer. Some people learn from application layer to physical layer, but both are correct. Both are correct as a sequence order layer one layer to layer three more type. It is a physical layer to application layer. In generally, a top layer to bottom layer means it is application to physical layer. Both are correct, but do not interchange the do not interchange the names like a application layer, transport layer, network layer, session layer, presentation layer, physical layer. Do not interchange like that. Allow always follow a sequence from top to bottom or bottom to top. Or otherwise, write down somewhere like a, there is a shortcuts also to their application layer, presentation layer, session layer, transport layer, network layer, data link layer, and physical layer. Okay, so write down somewhere before you are uh, enter or maybe any time, just write in in a in each small note or maybe in a, your hand. So whenever you see it, you will be able to recollect it. Okay, so. That's the point. Our reverse also no problem. Do two P's are there. So last P A means it is a physical layer. After A it is presentation layer. Okay. You can create some shortcut and also Cisco given one shortcut. Uh, shortcut means there is a, um, a sentence. If you follow the sentence, then you will remember. Kind of stuff. 
okay so what sir it is these are the seven layers so layer numbers always uh, is like a layer one layer two layer three from bottom to top it is there the first three layers are called uh, upper layers or top layers or software layers software layers the bottom three layers are um, bottom layers or uh, hardware layers the middle one that is the fourth one is a transport layer it is end to end connectivity it is a art of os layer art of os layer okay so each and every uh, layer we can able to one by one we can see of course i can uh, type okay already i told this thing but i will explain once again but so we'll see what is the meaning of application layer So what is a application layer? What is application layer? Guys, I'm accessing a website. So for example, I'm opening this website through my web browser. So web browser is comes under application layer. Application it is, web browser is an application, right? Um, uh, we are, uh, doing meeting okay our meeting through microsoft teams right so we are talking sharing chatting this is also a communication based application right so that is an application okay that is an application web browsers okay um, you know i have a putty application so where is somewhere it is yeah it is a putty application for example i have a remote ssh server is there means remote linux machine is there i have a linux machine i want to connect a linux machine from my pc remotely using ssh protocol so what i will do my linux server ip address or a host name and port number is 22 for ssh and then click open then it will ask username password and connect and maybe i have a remote server or a remote router something device is there i have to communicate with the telnet then i can simply the device ip address select telnet and open so i can able to connect it then i have to give username and password just in case uh, for example i have a communication port means serial port is there then I connected to a device like a router as switch for configuration. I will connect. So this is an application used to connect remote SSH servers or telnet servers kind of stuff. Okay. It is also an application. Client side application. I'm talking in a client side application. I have an Outlook. Using Outlook, I can send and receive a mails. So I'll do mail communication through this outlook application okay i can use the uh, uh, outlook application to send a mail and receive a mail communication okay and one more i will try to show you that is filezilla this is the filezilla application okay Filezilla an application is also a client application. I have a remote FTP server is there. I have a remote FTP server is there. I want to upload certain data from my physical machine or I want to download a data from my remote FTP server. Then I use Filezilla. Okay. So this is also a client side application. Client side application okay understand guys application okay i want to access mail communication means client mail application is required i want to access a website i need a web browser I want to upload or download uh, uh, files. So 
I use a FileZilla kind of applications, client side applications. Okay. Do you understand client side application? Client applications. What happened? Are you able to hear? Yes, sir. My app? Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, do you understand this client application? Application. No one is uh, telling anything. Guys, you are accessing a website. It to the web. Yeah, tell me. Tell it me. is like any desk. So yeah, that yeah. file Zilla you said. It is just like sir, any desk. Uh, any desk is a. Like you have a, a we you and me having a, any desk. I can see your desktop. Mm -hmm. Right, it is a desktop okay. sharing. Like I'm sharing my desktop. Same way any desk. Yes, sir. Yes, and team viewer, all right, desktop sharings. That is also an application. Any desk is also an application. Client or a server side application. Team viewer, for example, I install my team viewer. I'm sharing my desktop so you can viewing it. It means so both side. It is uh, I'm sharing means I'm a server. You're a accessing means your client side application. Okay. So web browser, very simple web browser is so web client. So using web browser, we can access websites. OK, so you are having a client application and meaning is there is a server also there. For example, web related. Web related communication. It means it is a web server. Right, so web server. For example, this is a web server and this is the client. So I sending a request. I need a web page. So my request is HTTP request. I send a, a request to the server. I want a web page. So this is the web server will respond to the client based on the client request. It will you respond? Yes, uh, this is the page available. Take it. As for request, this is the page. Take it. But how this is become a web server? By installing a role or a package or an application. Okay, like a Tomcat, you install Tomcat, Apache, HTTP, D or a NGIX. Okay, so different uh, type of apps are there to make a machine as a one server as a web server. Same goes like uh, this is my mail server. Mail server. What this will do? It will store the mails, send, uh, receive, send mails, kind of stuff. Mail, mess, mailbox management, client connectivity is there. I want to send a mail. Then I use a SMTP protocol to send a mail through from my mail client application. SMTP protocol to send a mail. Mail server receives the mail, and if I want to take a mail, my mails, I want to receive my mails, then use POP3 or right? IMAP protocol. Okay. Hello. So, yeah, tell me, tell me. So what is the use of IMAP? IMAP is also a protocol to retrieve a mails. Okay, sir. Uh, so Ashish asked one good question and you are also asked one question, right? Uh, simple guys, uh, first time app I will tell. Um, look at here. Can I able to access mails? Here. Right, in a browser I'm accessing the mails. And also I can access these mails. From. I can also access these mails from my mobile app also okay and uh, i can able to access through my outlook also means multiple clients is there then we use imap why because of imap like once you receive a mail when client received a mail 
the mail is also available in mail server mail is there in mail server and mail also will be at client side also pop is not like that pop we use when uh, like a mail server mailbox size is smaller for example gmail is giving 15 gb big size right gmail is giving 15 gb total space big size no problem but if in case you are getting a only 100 mb mail box size mailbox size is 100 mb so you cannot store all mails in mail server you have to store in your local so it will give confusion but no problem but remember imap means if you have a multiple client access we use imap so mails are stored in both mail server and as well as a client side also pop is not like that pop once you download a mails into your pc the mails will be deleted from server it's a single client type of kind of stuff so if you have multiple clients applications you don't use pop3 there we use imap to take the mails from mail server to send smtp to receive a pop3 or imap multiple clients big mailbox sizes imap is good small mailboxes means your mailbox size is smaller or a single mail is enough like you don't want to st store mails in the mail server or you want to store in your local pc pop3 okay both are plus or minus but i hope you understand pop imap at least http and http difference that is also we all discussed but again i will tell no problem because it is also good question it is http and https guys when you are sending a simple whatsapp type in a whatsapp you are sending a messages other side other person able to read the messages you can able to read he can able to read right so the recipient also can able to see the message between between you once you send the the your message is encrypted you can see end to end encryption in whatsapp you can see end to end encryption okay so data is encrypted so no other person who or uh, uh, interfering anyone is interfere with your communication but they don't understand what is that content in the message okay same way http for example i open a website like this something content i open okay this content okay if in case i am using http so i can see the data and there is a data in the server and if anyone is tracking data packets so they can also read what is data in that one in case i am using https i can see the data and remote server can able to remote server having a data i am also having a data i can read the data but while i am transmitting data or receiving a data data is encrypted okay s yes means secure s yes means ssl okay it use ssl uh, certification method means to encrypt your data so for securing your data ftp file transfer protocol using ftp protocol you transfer the data you upload or download the data data is not encrypted data is not encrypted okay so if anyone is attacking there so they can take your data also they can understand what data you are transmitting if in case you are using sftp or vsftp means data is encrypted same way telnet telnet is a protocol to access remote servers or a remote machines like a remote routers such as servers okay or um, to connect remote through command line interface command line interface okay you are connecting through telnet but is no encryption if in case you are using ssh 
you are using SSH. This is also same thing for remote connectivity. OK, remote connectivity purpose only. But SSH will give encryption. Secure shell. Same for RDP, but RDP is a GUI based connectivity. OK, remote desktop protocol. By default RDP, now we are getting 3389. It is a secured one. OK, direct desktop we can able to view using RDP protocol. SSH only command line connectivity. Telnet also command line connectivity, but SSH is a encrypted format. OK. Uh, application, so we are in application guys. This is mail server. How is machine or a server become mail server by installing some application like a Microsoft Exchange application or Zimbra application? Zimbra, Zimbra application by installing these applications, so it become mail server. Okay, guys, here it is application layer dealing with the application at client side, server side. Okay. Dealing means what are the comes under? What are the things comes under application layer? Client side applications, server side applications, and the protocols. Because you use HTTP protocol in web browser. You use a HTTP protocol in web browser. You use FTP protocol in the FileZilla kind of applications, right? Use Telnet SSH from your command line or a you can. For example, I will tell very simple. Your command prompt is also an application, right? So you do anything through this application. It is interface, but it is an application. I am pinging to Google.com. Works, right? Ping request I am sending through command prompt. So ping is a command. ICMP protocol ping is ICMP protocol using ICMP protocol. We can test whether you are able to reach google.com or not. Ping protocol. If in case I use HTTPS colon slash slash www.google.com and google.in. Does it work? It does not work here, right? The same way, the same way each application is dedicated for certain protocols dealing. OK, some pro that there are certain protocols, dealing, right? So the protocols. Their services. Applications, these three combination in the application layer. You guys understand little bit. Client application, yes, server sir. applications, very good. Okay, web browsers, web servers. Outlook mail client, out mail servers. Putty app is for remote access for SSS servers and telnet servers. We can able to connect it. Happy now, Shukla already came now. So why you forget? Okay. Starting on. Okay. Tell me. Uh, sir, ek baar fir se bol sakte hai? hello. Ah, you send a name right here. I've been out. Yes. I have already given attendance because I've seen your name in the list. I've been out. I'll let it to my name. I'll be Okay. So, okay. RDP remote desktop connectivity. And uh, any which ways, so already I told protocols and what is their port numbers, what is the user protocols is also part of our application layer. But I told already earlier, just I, this is a little recap and important. Okay, protocols will tell what is your request. For example, my laptop is there. Want to get an IP address from DHCP server. So what is the my laptop will do? It act like a DHCP client. Send a DHCP related request. 
okay dhcp chapter is there that there i will explain step by step but i will send a request to dhcp server i want an ip address dhcp request using dhcp protocol i open a website but we are we should communicate with the uh, ip addresses right i open name only with the name website name only i open but originally we should communicate in the network with ip address only but who will give that ip address dns server okay when i open this when i open this or maybe when i pinging this look at here when i pinging to google.com first i got a ip address who is giving this ip address dns server so my system send a request to dns server the request is dns request it send a dns protocol use a dns protocol send a request to dns server i want a ip address for www.google.com okay remember both the things dhcp dns example i told okay next http https request already explained so uh, there is a web server i want their web web page i have to send http request then only web server understand your request and give the response okay the same way the protocols are used to understand what is the request from client to server are right? it defines what is the type of communication is a remote access communication it is rdp communication network time synchronization so it is i am getting a date and time from my ntp server you know who is your ntp server go to edges date and time okay somewhere uh, you will get that information here it is time server is time.windows.com this is my time server based on my time zone selection based on my time zone selection i am getting this time date and time so i am in a plus 530 right so then my date and time will come if in case if i change my time zone my date and time also may change okay so time server will sync the time based on your time zone and this is my time server which protocol ntp protocol okay so each protocol is meant for certain service certain request okay and there is a reserved port numbers for a this protocols reserved means this port numbers should not use for a different communications in generally in generally these are the main protocols okay in general most useful protocols and out of that one i given only few what is this port numbers guys port numbers are representation of protocols so instead of uh, converting entire http data into the uh, ascii format and uh, make a system to understand it is very simple to to map to the port number and we easy easy to communicate with the port number because it is a number we can easily convert into your um, binary format because it's direct ascii uh, format only what is ascii anybody remember american standard code for information interchange this is a big chart box people who learning this c c++ they will learn this kind of stuff and if you don't know no problem if you want uh, this uh, waste not waste okay actually you have a letter symbols um, these things are there no so um, the everything has a certain value for example ascii a to z is there no value of a to z capital a to small z lower alphabets from 97 to 112 okay and upper alphabets are uh, c you can see letter small a ascii code is 
97 because it is a hexadecimal directly it will convert into binary capital a is a 65 065 and it is converting to binary fragment i think it is not the hexadecimal it is a octal number are different so i have to check it once again ascii is 97 one is okay but uh, where is 90 so one second i have to convert check it Okay, this is a 90. 9 means okay, it is binary format. Okay. 7 means actually 311. So I think it is uh, decimal format. So 97. Decimal format 97. Yeah, it is a binary format. Decimal format, sorry. Direct decimal format, I mean not hexadecimal format. Not octal. So it is again struggle. <laughs> again, big process and still. Okay, whatever it is, guys. These are the port number. Port numbers are representation of what protocol it is. Okay. HTTP port number is 80. HTTPS port number is 443. Why difference? Because it is our SSL, the port numbers will change. FTP 2021, SSS 22, Telnet 23, RDP 3389, SMTP 25, POP 3 110, IMAP version 4 143, TFTP 69, DHCP 67, 68. DNS 53, NTP 123, Kerberos 88, LDAP 389, SNMP 161, 162. Okay. So these are the certain port protocols and their port numbers. Each protocol having a, a thing. Okay. Some people are trying to remember this port number wise because 1, 2, 3, 4 is very easy. So what they will do, they will start giving sort these numbers and try to remember don't do that guys it will give more confusion better to follow protocol in a group wise http https both are web related communication 80443 that's it one point completed ftp it is also for remote uh, uploading downloading data kind of stuff two port numbers 2021 20, 20 to send 21 to receive SSH and Telnet and RDP, three are for remote access purpose only, but RDP is a remote desktop. Telnet and SSH are a CLI based remote access. Okay, command line interface type. Okay, so Telnet is a 23, SSH is 22. SSH is encrypted. SMTP, POP3 and IMAP, these three protocols are used for mail communication three protocols for mail communication smtp to send a mail or an outgoing mail server it is pop3 and imap for receiving emails so if you see pop3 you can easily understand 110 imap version 4 it is 143 and smtp is 25 tftp again ftp is different tftp is different but both are file transfer protocols only trivial file transfer protocol port number is 69 usually for upload or download a remote configurations you have a remote server configuration i want to upload a configuration or a remote or download a configuration back up the configurations okay we can use this tftp what i use maybe if you search in google maybe it will give uh, different type of answers also so we can use usually tftp ftp for just any file upload and download dhcp dns are here daily used type so you are getting an ip address from dhcp server using dhcp protocol so two port number 67 68 DNS, you open any website, any domain, any name, 
okay first we should it should uh, we should get an ip address for that one i want to communicate facebook.com google.com youtube.com okay so first of all i need their server ip address how to get it from dns server so using dns protocol 53 so dhcp dns or ip address related protocols ntp already i told ntp network synchronization time so only single time okay so not grouping kerberos ldap both are authentication protocols kerberos ldap both are authentication protocol port number 88 and 389 SNMP are a monitoring related protocol. So you have a infrastructure. You want to monitor their infrastructure from your monitoring machine, monitoring application. So what do you use? Port protocols 161 and 162. Okay. Of course, your ping protocol. Ping. Ping is a command, right? Ping uses. icmp protocol because why ping is using icmp protocol why protocol is needed of course it is also communicating right it will send a packet to google.com and it will receive a packet from google.com we are getting received packet details not sending packet details you send a packet the remote server received a packet and it will reply to you it is a echo mechanism you what are you send you will receive same thing okay you will receive same thing so that's why you are getting reply from this ip address you are receiving a packets so ping is a protocol to test the connectivity between your source and destination okay if you are getting a reply from destination machine means communication is good from your source to destination communication is good if you are not receiving reply from your destination kind of stuff it means somewhere communication is not good okay somewhere there is a problem either from source side or a destination side there is a problem or in between okay so that is also communication right so it is used icmp protocol the mechanism we call it as echo mechanism echo means you speak you will get same voice again empty room you speak then you will get same resound same way you send a packet to the remote destination pc destination pc also send same packet to you okay as a reply guys so this is our about your application layer sir sir uh, sir how is the ip address to google.com assigned uh, that is a very big story normally we have a <clears throat> iana i can uh, organizations are there which is maintaining ip addresses and domains domain name kind of stuff okay so if you want to create your own server or your own domain and you have a different type of uh, servers inside like a mail servers uh, web servers or maybe uh, some streaming services okay so what you will do you should get a, a some public ip address from your isp or a iana i can you have to apply for a ip addresses so you will get a public ip address and you will assign to your server and that also linked that information is mapped into the uh, this uh, um, top level domains okay in the top level like a .com server is there google.com facebook.com youtube.com is there no? the .com itself is server which contains google.com ip address facebook.com ip address Uh, more than one ip address so no one knows uh, how many ip address it can be multiple ip addresses depends upon users uh, means remote pcs remote connectivities sir uh, sir it also depends on uh, the server's location yes right right that is what i am trying to say 
it is also depends upon nearest server locations and racks kind of stuff so they will take multiple ip because to balance the load okay so they will manage in the dns level only a big story is there so for a dns that's definitely we'll discuss as a part of road uh, servers and services okay guys understand applications uh, application layer and uh, protocols and port numbers Hmm? Why happened today? What happened today? Okay. I'll give you a break. Man. Yes, sir. Okay, then. Five minutes. Back. Presentation layer, session layer. Both I will tell now, then we'll take a small break and then we'll continue remaining because transport layer is a bigger one. Remaining is are okay, no problem. Okay. Presentation layer and session layer is simple. Like a first application layer is little big explanation because protocols and are there. Presentation session layer is a smaller but very important layer is session layer. But only one single line. <laughs> uh, no balance. Okay, see. Presentation layer. You have seen the data, right? You can see this data. This is the data I am getting from the server, right? Or while I'm sending, or receiving a data while I'm sending, or receiving a data. Okay. So from starting side, it is first it will encode the data. It will convert what are the data, data format it is. It will convert either it can be a picture or it can be a music file, or it can be a video file, okay, or it can be a uh, text file, okay. It, anything, any data format it is, it is a file format or just uh, uh, showing on a screen kind of stuff, whatever it is, the entire data convert into ASCII format, okay. And uh, presentation layer also compress the data and decompress the data. So, it will compress data okay so like a um, bigger data is there it will compress so then it is easy to transmit it will compress the data while you are receiving it will decompress it while you are receiving de and decoding while sending encoding while receiving so at receiving side decoding while you are sending compression while you are receiving decompression and we are also using this uh, SSL type uh, TSL or SSL TLS or SSL type of encryption methods. Okay, and uh, encrypting de-encrypting is there. For example, I am open this document or maybe I open this web page or I open this mail. Okay, so what will happen? So while it is sending, it encrypt the data. So at receiving end, it decrypt and present the data. Okay. So presentation layer, three major roles, encoding, decoding, compress, decompress, encryption and decryption. Okay guys, presentation layer. Again, okay. Next layer is a session layer. Session layer. Session means I open a web page. So just I open a, a web page. Okay. Now I refresh it, right? Now new session is created. Session means I send a request with a session ID when I'm sending with a session ID created. So this server received a session.
Thank you, Balik. Okay. Okay. Yes. Ah, okay. Sorry, guys. Uh, um, um, what is session layer? Session layer. So when I sending a request, so that time only session will be created here. So I uh, this the request go to the server, and I received a reply from server. I received a response from server, and session is closed. Okay. So it is very important one. Okay. <laughs> it is very important session layer. I can give an example, but I will give later. Now people are all there. Okay. So session layer will create a session, maintain the session and terminate. Once you received your data, the session will be completed. You know what our browser will do? It refresh the sessions. So I open this one. Okay. So we can ask like, hey, sir, when you receive a mail, so you said session is completed. Then how you know the new mails, new changes will occur. Why we are getting these new changes we are receiving? Okay, action required. 31st December, one month is not even one month. I have to complete this course. Already wasted two months. I, I think you know already what is NET Academy, right? So uh, later I will tell otherwise. Okay, so when I receive a new mail, it is immediately updating here. How it is possible because of this site and this app is keep sending a request. Any new thing is there refreshing, recreating new sessions. Okay. Of course, there is a very good explanation is also there. Uh, one of my story it is happened. Uh, but I don't know people are not responding whether they are understand or not. That's why I'm getting a doubt on it. Okay. So for example, guys, I'm using a one network. So this is a network is like a, for example, it is my Wi-Fi network. I'm sending a data. Okay, are you sending a request or maybe I'm doing payment actual example is payment only guys when you do payment. Uh, generally using your mobile phone or anything by doing payment you you given bank details username passwords everything you given and what it is showing do not refresh or go to back button do not go to back or a refresh why why so it will maintain both the side a session okay so entire transaction complete transaction should be done in the same session ID only. If you refresh new session will be created new session ID will be created and whole session ID will be damaged. So you don't know whether payment is done or not because you are refreshed that new session ID again new request for a server whole session ID either it is successfully done a payment but you don't know. Okay, or maybe if the connecting app means, for example, you do uh, IRCTC or maybe you are paying in a Flipkart or Amazon. Go to your payment mode, you have done everything. Then in the same session layer, your payment is successful. Then it will send to that uh, Amazon app. Your payment is successful in the same session. Then you will get to know. But if you refresh, this entirely disturbed. That's why in a banking, okay. So while you are uh, doing any payments, it say do not refresh. In a final submission time, it will tell do not refresh or a, don't put a back button because of session will be terminated and new session will be created and no one knows what happened in background. Okay, it may be money will be gone or maybe it is maybe a transaction failure. No problem. But problem is if in case transaction successful, no further steps. That is very dangerous, right? You don't know whether transaction successful or not because you are already away from the session. So that is the power of session layer, but only singing line to tell. Remaining sessions, we, I will tell remaining part four, three, two, one. I will tell. 
after small break so when will be back so 12:15 is okay okay sir okay sir okay sir break